What's up, people? Said Mac here. You know it's been a minute. I've just been working. You know, I, I actually work in the music industry. I, I write songs. I produce. I engineer. I um, have clients that come to me. I go to clients. I work with my other team. You know, we'll talk about them and everything. Shout out to War Baby, uh, Piranha Digital, Jameer, Shagwell, all of them over there. Um, what's up, AR? And my uh, people, 17, DB, what's up? But yo, yeah, I've been uh, just been working and everything. So I just want to touch up a little bit and uh, talk about this new um, 808 plugin that Akai dropped, or Air Music rather, that they dropped. And just give you my opinions about it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through some of the presets. And um, I give you my opinion over it. Then I'll make a little quick beat with it just to see how it feels. And then we'll talk about the MPC 3.0 update that's coming soon as far as uh being officially released with the public beta is on the way and maybe coming on a couple of other creators who had their opinion on it and i'll give my opinion on it as well and um yeah so let's jump into it first thing i'm doing just gonna go through it just open up the interface and just do listen to the sounds and i probably won't say nothing i'm just gonna kind of go through the sounds then i'm gonna make a quick track with these uh sounds but if anybody's familiar with Sublab and Sublab XL, this is like that version for the MPC. And also uh, Serum. I use Serum a little bit, but I am uh, very familiar with Sublab. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, all right, I see you. One of my um, partners said, oh man, a machine crusher, or, you know, we'll talk about that later. You know, we'll talk about machine a little bit later, but let me just pull up the interface and just go through some of the sounds. Hope you can see my screen pretty good here. Sounds pretty good to me. Classic driven. I'm just gonna go through a few of these, not all of them. That's that famous spin. Uh, yeah, so that's just a few of them. Uh, in uh, later videos, I'll go through a few more, but let's uh, go ahead and make a track. I'm going to use everything internally in the uh, MPC. And I already got a, let me just come up with a melody. I 
All right, so this is the stage piano with uh, fabric, one of the instruments that uh, come with the fabric collection or with the MPC instruments. And I'm just gonna come up with a melody here. And let's see what we can do here. Thinking something melodic, you know, something we can add some 808s to. Uh, maybe a melodic R&B track, uh, to almost like a trap so type, but a r and a sweet R&B track with some 808 to Something simple like that. Let's just do that. playing the on the on the keyboard here I'm playing the notes I could do it here but I like the keyboard because you know the, the the notes are pitched so I like to play it on the keyboard 
um, I'll probably start doing some videos with the Key 37 as well. But right now, I'm using the XE with the uh, the XSE with the Phantom EX6 as my controller. So let's run this back. You got a lot to choose from. I think I like that one. And the one I started off with, the, I think it's Tremble, or Transcend. Yeah, Transcend. <laughs> NPC 3.0 thing here. All right, so I pulled up the, uh, let's go ahead and lay another sound with this. Uh, this instrument is the tube synth. So don't sleep on the sounds that Akai has. Like a lot of people, yeah, native instruments. Oh yeah, they're smashing Akai, the blah, blah, blah. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're smashing Akai. The I would say that they've been in the sound business longer as far as plugins and you know, uh, virtual instruments and things like that. But, uh, you know, don't sleep on these sounds. And also remember, you can create and make your own sounds and everything. I have analog synthesizers and everything, but do not sleep on the the Akai, the built-in uh, instruments that they have to offer. So yeah, um, just so far, just playing around with the, with this 808 joint. Yo, I think Air has something here. I think they really do have something. They're really trying to get everything in the box. And that's what we have been wanting since, I'm going to say for me, when I met in the car rep back in my guitar center days, I questioned, you know, when can we have something like the MV8000? You know, with the, by rolling, they tried it with the MPC5000, which is a dope machine, you know, with the built-in synth. But, you know, now we even got uh, a little bit more control. So, yeah, I'll be doing more videos on this. Right now, 
I will give it a I give it an A plus. You know, I don't it's FM synthesis is, is all in the box. You got two oscillators you can change so you can blend, you can create an initial patch, create your own sound, come up with some original stuff. And you know, I'm pretty sure some people are gonna be making their little sample packs and everything with this. But hey, it's right now it's $39.99 the uh that's the intro price and it was it's normally 79.99 that's you know what they would charge for but right now um akai or in music does have a uh, plug-in sale going on right now so uh although i don't have an affiliate link yet but go ahead um still i recommend it and uh so let's get into this npc 3.0 all right i'm gonna try to make this quick as possible um 3.0 came out and I saw the promo, the first video that I saw, the first notification I got even before Kai was from my neighbor, Bolo, the producer. And I saw his, you know, his video, the 3.0. And I'm like, okay, wow, they finally did it. I already had an idea of the, some of the things that they were gonna implement, you know, but um, what do I think about it? I actually love it. So, you know, it just makes the, the, the workflow even better, you know? So you have some people who talks about it, and they say, yeah, you know, I like all the features and everything, but what about the sounds? You know, we're still talking about the converted stuff. You know, that's all fine and everything, but at the end of the day, your sound is not gonna matter if you, you know, if your beats are mediocre and, and nobody's really buying them. So let me just get to that point right there and just say that um, as a producer, I've been learning and growing, you know, for a couple, over a couple of decades now. So, you know, um, whether or not somebody's good or not, that's subjective, but my thing is, you know, we talking about sound and everything, but you know, how about the art of production? What is your thing when you produce? Are you just making beats? Because traditionally a, a producer actually puts the whole song together. They, they just don't make the beat. Some producers do. You have some producers who don't make beats, but they are very well talented in putting songs together. So, and as far as the sound of the NPCs, the sounds are modern. You know, it's a modern sound. It's 2024. Uh, it's not 1990 uh, or 95 or 96. I love those records, by the way. I have a NPC 62. I have a 2000 and I have a 2000 XL. And I'm actually um, refurbing an NPC 3000 right now. I do love those sounds. I love the sounds of those records. But even when those records are tracked out and everything is done, they're still getting EQ'd and compressed and, you know, it's just raw out the box. Yeah, they sound great. But in order to fit into a song, you know, everything is mixed and, and you know, hooked up. But back on the MPC 3.0 software, I, I like the Ranger right now. Um, I am using the song mode, but I will say probably 75% of the time I'm doing my my eight bar, 16 bar loops, I'm tracking it into Pro Tools and now I'm arranging inside of Pro Tools or Logic or whatever DAW I decide to use. I've been on Luna a lot lately too, trying to say, hey, you know, how can I get away from Pro Tools? But I can't get away from Pro Tools. Every studio I go to, major studios, um, if you check out my Instagram, I've been to a couple of spots, but every all the studios use Pro Tools. So there's, there's no, it's really not a big debate on that, you know. So if you use Logic, that's fine. I use Logic, but when I go to the the studios and labels one to five, you got the Pro Tools session, things like that. So what I do, I track out, and I actually track out my beats through the interface. I rarely export. It just depends. If it's like a commercial beat or maybe a quick sync track or something to where it's not going to matter so much as far as the sound of it, um, I'll export it and then yeah, I can still get a great sound even after the fact. I can run it through my plugins or cycle it back through my hardware. But for the most part, um, I track my beats in. So one thing I would say about the MPC3 software, I think it's a bug about the mute, the uh, track mutes. It may be fixed now. I don't know. I don't have the beta yet. And I'm expecting that I did sign up trying to, you know, get some people to pull some strings so I can go ahead and get it. Once I get my hands on it, I'll be able to work more in the Ranger mode. Uh, and one thing that the MV8000 or the 8800 has is you're able to connect a mouse to it. And with this hardware and standalone, it would be great if you can connect a mouse to it to whereas you can grab things in the Ranger tool, grab your notes, highlight them, copy and paste them, move them around, click on them, delete them with a mouse. I think that would be a good 
move for the MPC 3.0 update when they finally release the, the final version. But um, I mean, I, I don't really have any complaints about it so far. And I know it's in beta mode. So they're taking all the feedback, especially when you get to, to the public beta. They're going to really get, you know, first of all, the bugs out. They're going to enhance the features. They're going to probably add a couple of more features. That mouse will be great. Mouse control. That would be great, by the way. Uh, maybe even to stream low latency to because it already has Bluetooth on, you know, maybe just uh, low latency or whatever uh, to some, you know, Bluetooth headphones or whatever. Um, see what else could they do like like right now I'm, I'm i'm happy with the update so far i like how everything is streamlined right there in your face um i'm not sure why people was getting mixed up with the programs okay i can say this i've been on the npc since around 94 95 so i get it if you don't understand what a program is when i say program i think of it as just a kit just a sound kit with all the parameters and all the samples in it so um programs you know they call it tracks now so which is fine it should be less confusing track edit instead of program edit but a uh, program is just a sound kit everybody's not gonna like the npc 3.0 update maybe if you've been on it for a while you may not like it but uh for me i do and i've been on the npc for a while um the song mode i think it's a bug you know but being able to record the audio in in the arranger record your parts in the arranger uh, doll style but I think it's a good thing I think it's I think it's moving forward with you know being being modern with what's going on right now in the technology and the NPC truly is now it's gonna be all in one you know a lot of people you know can you record vocals yeah you can record vocals you can record any audio signal and um, stream the audio files from the disk which frees up you know a lot of RAM and processing power and things like that but as far as the 3.0, I love it. Once I get it, I'm gonna make a few tracks live and just talk about it a little bit more. Right now, I've just been watching everybody's videos and um, you know, just cooking up a little bit, see if I can make some things happen with that. But right now, I'm, I'm cool with the MPC 3.0, you know, or MC, MPC 3, you know, I know what I'm saying 3.0. And so, and naturally, you're gonna still get the hate or the what I call hating on it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You don't have to use it. You know, just they have a, a simple button in there that says downgrade. If you don't want to use the 3.0 and you thinking that it's not that great because, you know, it didn't do anything to the sound, don't use it. You know, just don't use it. Use what you use what you want to use to make your beats. And whether you're a hobbyist or you serious about it. But what I'm seeing is that a lot of people they're not serious about the craft of music production they just make beats and talk stuff you know so i'm not saying get placements get on the billboards and all that and you know we'll worry about what i'm doing later but right now yeah i do i got some stuff i got some placements some things that are happening in different genres of music and nobody would even have a clue that i did this song or that i had anything to do with it but once it dropped i'll um I got it recorded how I made the beat and everything. So we'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, if you don't like the 3.0, just easily revert back to the to the old OS if you don't like it. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna ask you, did you make that beat with 3.0 or did you make it with 2.15? Nobody cares. Do they like the track or not? That's the bottom line. Nobody cares if you use FL Studio. Nobody cares if you use the MPC. Nobody cares if you use Logic. If they don't like the track, they don't like the track. They don't care what you made it with. If they love the track, you know, I get asked a lot of times by artists, hey, what did I do? My process, I, I do have an analog front. I have some of my gear running through the mixer here, and I have uh, UAD emulations inside of my console as well. So, And I saturate it with those emulations and also with... Uh, hardware external gear you know but you know we'll talk about that process a little bit later i think that everybody's worrying or talking about the sound so much which is cool my thing is learn how to use your gear learn how to use the software study arrangements 
I'm hearing beats and stuff like how are you going to make a song out of that you know um, every track is not made to be a song so you know you might just be doing background music sync music no track is the throwaway track your track can earn money playing for 10 seconds in the background of a TV show so nothing is thrown away but all I'm saying is focus on the craft of production study these producers study uh, in the you know the ones who are great you know I'm talking about Quincy Jones Rick Rubin um, all of these great producers out throughout history you know and you will find that many of them didn't even we call it make beats now but a lot of them didn't even play on the tracks at all you know so i would just suggest learn the craft of that before going about these 500 series eqs and ssa you don't even know what an eq is and what it does like learn what that stuff does first and then jump into you know as you learn from the engineering aspect and from the production aspect of how to get a certain sound, you know, study those aspects while you explore this gear. You know, I think the plugins are great to like just try things out. And then once you get your hands on hardware, you have a better idea, you know, of what's going on. So my thing is, you know, a lot of people talking about, oh, I run my stuff through mixing and I do this and I do that. And you know the the new NPCs sound like trash and all of that. Uh, I don't know. It just I don't know. I'll just keep it civil and just say you know I disagree with that. It's really what you do with it. It's really what you put into it. You know, you're, like you load your certain samples. You know, it'll it'll play back. Like I can do a track on the NPC sixty, and then just for the workflow purposes, I may sample the loop inside of the. MPC XE or my live or whatever MPC new generation MPC that I want to use and I re I get a really good sound because it just records exactly what was put in it you know whether it's this one I got a 2000 XL that's crazy yeah out the box it does sound warmer it is more punchier you know but um, just a preference you know it's my thing is just learn how to make marketable beats learn how to produce and I'm never going to stop learning. I have mentors that are, you know, got the Grammys, got the awards and I'm learning from them every day, you know, and I've been in it for a while and I just think that's, that's, that's what we need to focus more on. If you're an engineer or you're a producer, you know, really learn, understand what an EQ is, understand what a, what a uh, compressor is, learn those aspects of engineering even when you're tracking you know um understand that when that hardware receives that signal you're going to get some kind of little extra punch that's true but try to make it sound good you know i'm just playing around with this beat right here or whatever i can hear it i can hear the song i can hear it as a background beat for something in a show, TV show, sync track, you know, but always study your craft, you know, study the craft of music production. Sound is a big part of it. Like listen to that off the wall album by Michael Jackson, the way that they did that. Try to find the the version that's not digitally remastered, but the digital remastered version sounds great too because it comes from the analog gear, okay? But it's a lot of bad sounding music that was ran through analog gear too. As far as bad, I mean like trash garbage songs, you know, trash beats that was ran through analog gear or whatever. But that's why I'm saying just learn the craft, learn the art of production. If that's what I'm on. I'm trying to get better every day. So I'm back on my music theory. So, but yeah, 3.0 overall, I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's, I'm with it. I'm with it. I just, you know, hope I just take out all of our advice on it and implement some things that they can implement. And so far, all the things that I mentioned back in 2008, 2010 to the Kai rep, I'm starting to see all this stuff coming to uh, fruition. So, you know, the built in sounds in the MPC, do not sleep on those instruments, please stand alone. You can do everything that you need to do inside the MPC. Now, yeah, I got the Phantom. And I have other external synths as well. So I like to blend everything. 
I like to blend everything and you know I, I will use for idea starters I'll use splice I'll use um what is it arcade you know I flip it I might even just use a straight loop but I'll at least change the key and the tempo but learn the art of production you know before oh I'm about to go buy this 500 rack series and run all my stuff through there don't run a bunch of garbage through there because it's not going to help okay so I'll just say that and leave it at that and I will be showing how I got everything connected in my studio and I do run through analog gear as well yeah and that's that's just my two cents on it so to summarize everything the I like the I like the 808 plug-in I like the, the sub it's called sub factory by air which is a basically in in music company with in you know in cahoots with a car so you can use it on the MPC you can use it as a plug-in you can use it inside of any doll it don't have to be the MPC software so that's a good thing for me so you know and for a lot of people who don't use the MPC they want to get a nice plug-in for 39 bucks I mean can't beat it. I think Sublab was maybe 69, 70 bucks at the time I bought it. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a really good program. And I would just say, hey, go for it, you know. So, I'm going to be out. And I'm going to holler at y'all later. And I'll see y'all on the next one. I'll go a little bit more in debt and uh, just probably just do more tracks. And especially when I get the 3.0 software, I'll be posting more videos. All right. Peace out. Thank you.